So this is a natural follow on to the previous presentation. One of the things that Chung mentioned was um, how um, grading couplers can be used for coupling the signals. And one of the big challenges with any of these optical components is how to test them, and ideally how to test them in wafer form. I'm happy to say that Yen Optics is speaking today and they actually have a industry leading solution in this space. Tobias Knoch, I'm sure I didn't say that perfect, uh, received his diploma in physics from University of Jena in Germany in 2005, specializing in wave optics. He followed his studies Following his studies, he worked as a mechanical engineer and developed interferometer oh, stylus measurements at Bosch. Um, he joined in optics in 2008, designer for diffractive optical elements, uh, field of lithography, laser material processing, ophthalmology. That's interesting. After joining the product management group, he was responsible for product management for UV micro optics for semiconductor equipment specifically. Uh, he has led this project for Gen Optics since 2016. It's called a UFO probe, and it's in the early development stage, going to final market introduction soon, I suspect. But he'll tell you more about that in the next few slides. Tobias? Thank, thank you, Dave, for the introduction. And uh, also to, my, uh, to the previous uh, speaker, Chong, uh, for his uh, good talk, and, and as you said, uh, um, so this leads directly uh, to, to my topic on how uh, to enable the high volume data communication, especially by solving new challenges in PIC uh, wafer testing. And um, so, um, <clears throat> as we heard from uh, from uh, Chong uh, in the previous talk. Um, the um, yeah the uh, uh, topics in um, uh, data communication is really uh, by solving power issues and that is done by uh, optical going to optical communication especially uh, within uh, data centers and here the core com component of uh, those devices is a photonic integrated uh, circuit as shown here um, in this case. Uh, it is uh, implemented in a pluggable plug uh, transceiver, but this can also uh, apply to uh, co-packaged uh, transceivers or um, if we go beyond uh, data communication in uh, even other uh, applications. So um, what uh, we um, as, as in optic um, um, doing in this field is uh, we, we do uh, micro optics uh, for optical coupling, um, especially for fiber to pick coupling, uh, in, in this case, fiber to fiber coupling, but also uh, laser to pick coupling, uh, where you mount uh, the laser modules directly onto, uh, onto the chip. And uh, we build um, customized uh, devices and enable here the optical communication uh, really to, to uh, in, in terms of manufacturing. And our uh, um, manufacturing capability here relies on, on a grayscale uh, lithography so that we can uh, produce uh, very uh, sophisticated um, shapes uh, with different uh, geometries. Uh, that are uh, really uh, adapted to the actual applications. But that is uh, not uh, the topic I want to speak uh, about today. Um, this, um, the actual topic is uh, wafer level, optical wafer level testing. And uh, here you see uh, our uh, UFO probe for, that we de developed for that purpose. So um, as we heard, uh, photonic integrated circuits are produced on uh, wafers and on wafer scale. And there's always uh, the, the question uh, where to test. And uh, we also heard that um, there are different um, ways of integrate uh, those uh, chips. We heard um, that um, there's a monolithic integration where you have all functions in, in one chip and maybe just introduce uh, the light source onto the chip or couple 
uh, or have an um, extra uh, light source where you couple via fibers uh, into the uh, uh, chip. I called it here EPIC uh, chip, electronic photonic integrated uh, circuit. But then you also have the heterogeneous integration where you uh, integrate uh, onto uh, more or less pure optics chip with maybe modulators and, and some um, uh, minor electrical functions, um, the driver chips onto the light, light source. And uh, if you have a closer look onto the process flows, you see um, that you have the, the general wafer level manufacturing. And uh, afterwards, um, the wafer level integration of uh, I, I see. Uh, chips which are produced also on 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 wafer scale, but on a, maybe on a different line on different nodes, and uh, those are, are then integrated. And along the line, you have different um, areas where you uh, want to test. So um, if you are not capable to test quite early, uh, you just need to rely on the final test, maybe in the module, and that. Um, um, yeah, re relates to to a lot of effort, which is already implemented in the module. And if something goes wrong be, uh, along the line, uh, you just screw this uh, these efforts. So the idea is really to have a very early knowledge about each die uh, if it's working or not. And here's um, uh, the way or the the, uh, the point where we try to uh, come up with a solution for wafer level testing of uh, these photonic integrated circuits and maybe also uh, laser diode chips. And um, so that's um, our UFO probe. It's a more or less abbreviation for ultra fast optoelectronic probe card. And this ultra fast uh, relates more to the scalability of, of the probe card. So the blueprint of, of uh, our idea is really the um, electrical test. Um, so um, um, we, we addressed uh, applications like optical transceivers and uh, related to that PCM structures uh, that are used in, uh, in that um, uh, process, but uh, also photodiodes, as I said uh, before, and related to the uh, optical transceivers, there are applications uh, coming up like optical switches or maybe pure optical switches, even optical quantum quantum computing and uh, solar solid state uh, lidars. Uh, for the sake of uh, uh, completeness, uh, also put here fluidic chips, but that's more or less difficult. Um, uh, to handle, but biosensors is also a very interesting uh, point where you need to maybe you need to test uh, photonic integrated circuits. So, what what's the general idea of uh, our solution? Um, uh, we we started this development uh, with the idea to use uh, the standard IC. Um, prober and, and test equipment, which is already available uh, in the market and, and run for uh, decades and very well uh, established. And um, so uh, here uh, is the re then the requirement that um, there's uh, that we uh, that there's no active alignment per chip as it is done uh, with uh, typical optical uh, testing and uh, also uh, uh, a good uh, parallel qualification or a scalability of uh, the testing, even going to multi-dot uh, test regimes. And, and ideally, uh, this test solution should be operated by the same uh, uh, IC uh, test personnel, personnel and, and operators that are doing the uh, IC tests. And so uh, here we um, developed this um, solution by integrating uh, optical and electrical probes into a single probe card that is uh, very well comparable to a um, pure electrical probe card. As you see it here mounted on a standard prober, that's an uh, Acritec uh, prober uh, in the field. And um, so the, um, here, if you uh, have an idea on, on how actual optical testing is, is done, uh, um, that 
you need to align the, the optics or the fibers and the optics interfaces uh, in a sub micrometer uh, uh, tolerance to the interface on the chip. Um, you see that the um, prober tolerances are more or less in the range of uh, uh, micrometer. Um, and there uh, uh, we implemented an uh, alignment insensitive optical concept that deals with uh, these prober alignment tolerances. Yeah, and here you see um, an, um, a picture or uh, here's a rendering of our uh, probe card um, that we kind of established uh, uh, yeah, in, in a standard format. So we used the Euro, Euro card format, uh, which is uh, very easy to handle. And this probe card here has uh, the typical electrical interfaces cust customized uh, like uh, as the customer needs it to uh, to his uh, testing devices. And on the wafer side of the probe card, you see uh, the um, here in, in detail, the uh, electrical needles. In this case, we started with cantilever, uh, um, with a cantilever probe card and implemented here our optical module. And that's an, uh, the, the heart of the module is a glass-based uh, um, optical uh, chip, I would call it, or optical module with uh, waveguides uh, to, to route uh, the optical signals within this uh, device. And uh, in, in this special probe card, we have uh, 16 optical channels. We can uh, currently go up to uh, 32 channels uh, with no problem. Even more are, are possible, but need a um, little bit uh, of, of development. And uh, this probe card is uh, de developed for vertical emitting pits, uh, peaks. So that means whether grating couplers uh, that uh, emit the light perpendicular out of the uh, wafer surface or other uh, um, elements uh, which, which uh, could be implemented. So um, this uh, optical module is uh, implemented in a monolithical way. So it's uh, quite uh, it's fixed uh, to the probe card and therefore this probe card uh, has no active alignment in, inside uh, itself. Yeah, and for the um, needle technology, we co cooperate with uh, probe card with, with uh, manufacturers um, so that we uh, really use the proven technology, which is uh, uh, used in, in other applications. Uh, so we did not want to invent the, the, the wheel twice in this case, but really concentrate on, on our core com competence, uh, which is uh, the optics. Yeah, um, how does it work actually? Um, the working principle is that, uh, as I said, um, the optical module, uh, where you see here a cross section through the probe card with the PCB and uh, maybe some, some stiffener uh, element and uh, also the optical device holder. You see here the um, uh, actual optical element uh, as glass uh, block. And in, in the end, uh, the fiber connection to the uh, test equipment, which can be laser source, uh, power meter, and, and other equipment uh, which is needed in, in, in the system. And uh, you see that the, um, there's an uh, optical working distance in, in the range of 200 micrometer um, we implemented so that uh, here also um, um, test um, or, or uh, the, the, the usual uh, uh, procedures in, in using uh, uh, these probe cards, for instance, uh, online cleaning can also uh, be implemented. And uh, as I said before, there are different tolerances between optics uh, coupling and the electrical uh, connections. So uh, while the electrical connections are in a, in a micrometer range, uh, the optics is uh, uh, requires a very, very uh, uh, tight tolerant, tolerance, even for, for grating couplers. So uh, if you come with a typical um, fiber, the grating coupler would expect the same mode profile or intensity profile from the fiber. Um, so because they are typically matched 
So uh, you see here a kind of Gaussian profile. And if you align it, uh, uh, the, those uh, profiles very well, you get a good coupling efficiency. And then once you step uh, with the um, with the wafer and, and the wafer power from one die to another, uh, you introduce some offset, some tolerance to, uh, coming from the prober and so on. And the um, grating coupler uh, lies on a slightly different position. So it, ex it expects its mode profile on this different position. And if you do not realign your actual, um, your actual uh, um, illumination profile, for instance, then uh, just the overlap of the expected mode profile position and the uh, actual mode profile position, uh, mode pro uh, profile po position, is then coupled into the grating coupler, and you get a drop uh, of your measurement uh, value. So that's a an, an, an general uh, uh, working principle of um, our uh, probe card. And uh, here you see the um, actual uh, probe card um, in, in real life. We also implemented uh, distance sensors. Uh, th these are capacitive uh, distance sensors to uh, control or uh, monitor the, the working distance uh, to the wafer close to the position. And on this detail of uh, our module, you see the, uh, the needle layout and uh, our optical pickup element. And that's actually mounted here on, on the prober with a silicon photonics wafer uh, 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 in testing. So, um, what um, uh, yeah, what, what we uh, uh, also uh, did is a uh, test of, of uh, customer devices of customer test devices in uh, uh, yeah test or field uh, conditions on uh, such power and uh, they see that um, with just one touchdown the complete uh, wafer map uh, uh, or uh, not in one touchdown but in, uh, in one touchdown, um, uh, the information on electrical and optical uh, um, can be uh, uh, achieved. And so you can uh, yeah, set up a, a complete wafer map uh, for all uh, needed um, yeah, test requirements. So um, maybe a few words on on uh, the actual measurement capabilities and, and uh, tolerances. So uh, here's an uh, uh, measurement test uh, uh, a cap capability uh, measurement test um, of, of such a wafer I showed before of uh, 19 different chips uh, spread over uh, the complete wafer. And uh, so we uh, performed different uh, tests on, on that. One was uh, a, wafer, a cycle of wafer loading and unloading and repeated this uh, five times and um, measured in each cycle all 19 dice with uh, such an uh, uh, alignment channel uh, called or uh, just a, a loopback channel uh, on, 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 on the actual chip. And you see that the, uh, uh, the spread of, of the measurement uh, of the rel relative insertion loss is uh, within uh, 0.160 dB plus minus of, of the maximum values. And uh, the 90% uh, or 90% of the measurement values lie within 0.12 dB. And um, another uh, test uh, we performed uh, was um, where, where we loaded the wafer just uh, once and repeated the uh, measurement uh, time or the, the measurements with the loaded wafer on, on the, uh, on the prover. And there you see that um, the uh, measurement values and the spread of the uh, relative insertion loss uh, gets uh, a bit closer and lies uh, in maximum still within uh, plus minus uh, 0.14 dB. 
uh, but the 99% uh, of the values are now within plus minus uh, 0.06 dB, so uh, very close to each other. So that uh, uh, really gives an indication that the prover still has an influence on, uh, on the measurement uh, um, uh, tolerance and the me measurement capability. But uh, the, the, uh, what, what you also see is that the big uh, impact on uh, uh, yeah, position tolerance is uh, uh, dealt by, dealt by, by our probe card. So um, how do we uh, achieve this uh, working principle and the probe card uh, um, um, yeah, uh, work? So uh, what's done in, in by manufacturing of, of the probe card is a full uh, characterization of, uh, of the complete uh, optical channels. You see, uh, a detail of, of the optical chip and uh, cantilever needles. And uh, so we uh, measure complete the uh, complete beam profile in XY position and uh, also in, in Z direction. So we have a complete information on, on the uh, behavior of, of each channel and uh, the divergence. And we can measure the, the wavelengths, uh, the dependency polarization dependency and uh, in, insertion loss as well. And with the same setup, uh, the needle uh, are inspected so that it, uh, it's ensured that the complete uh, probe card works in, in the prober and uh, uh, performs. So uh, with, with the same setup, uh, we are um, capable of uh, also doing some minor uh, uh, pick tests or uh, just uh, got a, a short qualification on how the grating coupler uh, behaves, how the mode profile from the uh, grating coupler looks like so that we can, uh, if this is necessary, can adapt uh, the uh, optical module and the beam profile and uh, to these uh, mode profiles and so that um, an optimum in performance is uh, ensured. This, um, yeah, maybe this looks a bit like, like that, where uh, you see here from, from uh, a certain test waiver um, uh, an uh, image uh, where the beam profiles are um, extracted along uh, X, uh, both axes. We, uh, did an uh, wavelength sweep so that you have also the information on uh, behavior on, on different uh, wavelengths. And um, on, on the right hand side, uh, and the uh, here, here actually uh, would, would have seen an animation on the propagation along the that that axis uh, of the of the grating coupler. So uh, in, in, in general, the, the uh, spe specifications of the probe card are uh, here given for the current uh, generation. Uh, we are uh, able to implement cantilever and vertical needles. Uh, vertical I did not show here, but uh, that's also done uh, at the moment. Um, we are concentrating on grating coupler or more precisely on vertical uh, uh, emitting uh, elements. So it don't has to be necessarily uh, be a, a grating coupler, but something that emits vertically or on a certain angle. Um, yeah, um, there are up to 32 channels, maybe pl plus minus. Uh, uh, so it's not a, not a fixed value, but that's a kind of uh, standard we, we are implementing. And uh, uh, standard pitches uh, we can uh, address uh, 250 micrometer and uh, 127 micrometer uh, of the grating couplers uh, that are uh, currently aligned in a 1D array uh, along the same uh, direction. So uh, also the uh, angle uh, 
the emitting angle of the grating couplers can range from, from zero de degree to, to 20 degree. That's uh, adaptable uh, um, with the optical module typically is uh, 11.6 degree for uh, in air uh, that, that accommodates the, the eight degree uh, polish of, of fiber uh, of the fibers. So uh, wavelengths um, is uh, the um, data com wavelengths of 1310 and 1515 nanometer. And uh, as I have, what I've shown, the repeatability is in the range of 0.3 dB and the target is uh, um, going down to 0.1 dB. So we actually shown better values here, but uh, uh, with, with all uh, variation uh, uh, would address this value. Um, regarding uh, RF measurements, uh, uh, we uh, doing, doing, uh, do it to the vertical uh, needle. Uh, uh, we can address yeah, all uh, measurement frequency that the electrical probe card is actually uh, capable of. So here, that's why we cooperating with uh, probe card manufacturers. And uh, currently it's in, in a, uh, for cantilever, just in, in a, I would say in a, in a DC range, a few hundred uh, megahertz is uh, possible. And uh, in, in vertical, for vertical needle technology, it can uh, go in, in a, a gigahertz uh, domain. So what's coming in uh, what we see or what we are developing to is um, going to a higher uh, number of, of uh, optical uh, in and outputs and uh, also have to, to implement a, a freely configurable uh, layout. So it means kind of 2D layout where uh, not uh, all optical in outputs are on, on a 1D array. And uh, also what's very important is to go uh, beyond uh, the Euro card format and really address uh, tester interfaces and uh, the automated uh, um, yeah, test equipment, which is uh, uh, capable of doing gigahertz measurements and uh, really a uh, lot of measurements. So, um, with that saying, uh, I'm at the end of my talk and um, are open for questions. Thank you, Tobias. So you mentioned at the end there, the Europa card format, what's involved with taking your probe from what I think is that big black box around everything to a, a more standard uh, probe card setup? So um, with, with more uh, standard probe card format, you mean uh, especially? I, I'm, I'm referring to a typical uh, um, PCB in a test fixture. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think what you have there is very compatible with um, cantilever probes. Vertical yeah. probes are typically coupled vertically into a PCB that could be much larger than that. So I'm curious yeah, if you could have be. experience with that and, and if there's anything magic in your black Europa uh, setup mm -hmm. that we need to replicate in another form factor. So um, what, what we uh, have here implemented, um, th so that's uh, actually uh, uh, yeah, a, a special stiffener uh, uh, on this probe card uh, that uh, represents the, the Europe card uh, for, format and uh, also gives us uh, more freedom to implement our, our optics uh, to, to the probe card. Um, there is possibility to uh, as implement vertical in this format as well. So if the if, um, customer is uh, okay with uh, Europe card format and it fits into this format, then uh, it's uh, uh, doable. Um, so in, in terms of going to, to larger uh, formats or other standard formats, um, it is uh, yeah, very well possible. Um, uh, just want to 
this, uh, yeah. Um, so here you see um, the, the wafer site of, of the probe card, and that's the uh, actual module we we are um, uh, assembling to, to the probe card. And uh, other standard formats would need to give a, a, um, a free space in, in, in this area to uh, uh, assemble our module. Um, and as long as we, um, uh, we, we can also adapt it uh, to special needs, but we would need some space in, in, in this area. Excuse me. <laughs> Understood. So are there any um, this, uh, spacing requirements if we were to do a vertical probe next to your optical probe? Is there uh, some implications there we need to take into account? Um, yeah, vertical, the, that is really um, the, um, the, the uh, uh, so, so you have uh, two sides uh, of, of um, um, dimension constraints, I would say. One is from, from our optics here, yeah, um, uh, and the other is from, from, from the uh, vertical pro pad, where you have uh, some uh, 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 ceramics uh, that hold the, the, the vertical. So um, uh, the idea uh, why we uh, use this kind of uh, optical device is that we wanted to stay quite flat and, and uh, so that we can uh, uh, implement uh, this module to a, a vertical probe head. And the, uh, what we would need is a kind of better cutout um, to a, a small uh, pocket uh, where this uh, module can, can uh, Fit. go into uh, here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have uh, the, the, the distance. Uh, um, you see that the, the, the rays are coming not uh, out of the uh, module, not completely at the end uh, of, of, the, um, of, of the glass block, but uh, in a certain distance. And you have uh, some um, uh, distance constraints first from, from our optics and then uh, same from, from the mechanics here in, in, in the vertical block. And these need to match together. And uh, if you uh, can implement this in the layout of the chip, so design for test, for instance, uh, then it's uh, even preferable. So then, then uh, can be designed from two sides, from, from testing side and from the uh, chip and layout side to uh, uh, have a good running test. Thank you, it makes sense. And, and last question, um, Chung um, shared that, that they are going with V-Grooves for their mm -hmm. interface. I'm wondering if you, you have any creative ideas how to take your grading coupler vertical approach and leverage it into the V-Groove space. Um, so um, currently the, the, uh, this approach, as, as you uh, correctly say, saying um, is not capable of, of doing uh, edge coupling, but um, there, uh, since this probe card, uh, um, is you or shall be used for high volume tests and, and not the full maybe not the full characterization but a dedicated tests. Um, one can think about a, a, a certain design for test where you maybe implement uh, uh, test structures uh, on the chip that are uh, vertically and can be used by the probe card, or uh, uh, if if there are other ideas to really uh, uh, have an other uh, more complex um, yeah, test solution uh, um, to, to actually address the, uh, the, the V-grooves, but that's not uh, implemented yet. Very good. Thank you for your time. I, th I thank our sponsors, including Adventest, who's received the highest industry scores in terms of customer satisfaction survey from Test Insight, ranking as the number one large supplier of chip making equipment. And I also want to thank Omcor and Cadence for sponsoring this event and their sponsorship has enabled us to make these events free. So when you have an opportunity, please thank them for sponsoring MEPTEC. And once again, I want to thank all of you for joining us and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>